morning um, at, at the end of service, you can <laughs> jump in the web welcome desk. Somebody yeah. be there for you. Like, and for those of you that aren't our first time visitors, we thank you for coming. And, and those joining us online, we're online now. Hey, thank God for you guys online joining us. Let's give a round of applause for joining us online. Thank you so much. All right, just a quick announcement on Wednesdays. This last Wednesday, our founding pastors, Pastor Paul and Pastor Ann, uh, finished a series, Breaking Intimidation. And uh, so that is online. It's stored on YouTube and Facebook. If you want to go back and, show, and watch all those, it's a very, very good series. We finished that series up. So right now, good news, bad news, however you want to take it, but we are actually going to be stepping back a little bit, taking a break from our online uh, showing of Wednesday nights. And uh, I really ask you to pray and to seek God in that time that we as a church and as, just follow God and see what he has for us next. All right. Uh, also, at that time, we're stepping up our camera system here in the, in the house and it's giving us time to work on that. But uh, that's what's going on. So if you, you haven't watched all the Wednesday nights for the last almost year, you can go back and fill in one of those. Join with somebody. Invite somebody over your house, maybe. Have uh, some breaking of bread and breaking into the bread, the word, and, uh, and do that. Join with somebody and do that. But at this time, we're just going to be taking a break from our online Wednesday night campus. But uh, we, we just want you to join with us and seek God and what he has in the future. I mean, you're excited about the future of what God has for Amen. our church. Amen. Amen. We need your prayers. We've got your prayers at the time. Go ahead. Food bank. Let's try to get through this one. You got this. You got this. <laughs> okay. Thursday is our drive through giveaway from 4 to 5. And we need volunteers to help to load up the cars and to clean up. So please be here by 345 um, and bring a mask to wear during the giveaway because we are working with the public. We are wearing masks. Um, so be here by 345 to help load up cars and to clean up. And um, just thank you so much in advance. Yeah, that goes from 4 to 5. So again, if you can't be here all time, just want to show up and help us clean up. We need help doing it. It's much Amen. work and it's great work. But we need a little bit of help doing that. So thank you for all those that uh, take part in that helping and giving. And speaking of giving, we want to thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. And uh, three ways to give. You can give online, you can give by mail, or you can give here in the boxes in the back. We thank you so much for being faithful to the Lord, even through this season, uh, with everything going on. But we've just seen faithfulness in our giving here at the church and uh, steadiness. And I thank you for that. Amen. So with that said, I ask you to stand. And we are going to say our church mission statement, our declaration. And then right after we finish saying that, the kids can be released. Amen. Into the kids' ministry. It's like release the Kraken. Release the children. They're going to go over to their classes. We thank you so much for all those that help with the children's ministries, nurseries. And we really appreciate that. So let's put that up on the screen. And let's come on. Let's declare it from our heart. We will be the church. We will be the love of God. Kids can be released. And if you would, just grab your Bible. You can find your seat. Yeah. Grab your Bible and turn into Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We are continuing a series that we are started a few weeks ago called, what is it called? I don't know what was it called. Sunday School 101. I was just seeing if you guys were paying attention. Somebody else was shouting out. Sunday School 101. Sunday School 101. We've been talking about foundation. Uh, this is this will be the third part of foundation, possibly the, the final part, depending on how much information we get through. But it's just been good. It's a great time in, in our life to be reminded of our firm foundation. Amen? Amen. So we're going to open up the scripture and then we'll pray. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. It's been our key scripture through this teaching. Go to God. Read this out. It says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. 
and it fell, and great was its fall. Let's bow in prayer. But God, I pray today that you feed the hungry. I pray that you encourage those whose heart is heavy, hurt, and disappointed. Lord, I pray you focus the distracted heart today and wake up the sleeping. Rescue the lost and the wandering, God. In this same message, I believe that you can do all these things and more. Because you alone are God, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Come on, the church said. Amen. 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 God is good. I'm excited to prepare this, uh, share this word with you this morning. I thought it was funny. Pastor said something last week about his notes and my iPad. Well, basically, it's not because I'm more tech savvy than he is, although that's true. Uh, that's not hard to do. Uh, but uh, it's because my writing is so poor when I'm taking my notes, when I'm jotting things down. I don't want to sit here and misquote everything I've written down because sometimes I can't decipher the hieroglyphics I call my notes. And I have to stare at them like, what did I mean when I wrote this? And then type it out. And it's amazing in font. It's so clear. So that's great. Um, so that's why I use an iPad, not because I'm trying to be cool with the iPad and everything. We are in our third sermon on the foundation, Sunday School 101. It's a back-to-basics teaching. It's a fundamentals. It's a, a refresher course to some and possibly a brand-new course to others. It's funny. I've had a few people come up to me after the sermon or series as we, as we talk through these, and they're like, thanks for making it simple. And you know, that encourages me that, that we're doing this right. We need to get back to the basics. Amen? It, the, the gospel is simple. It's a simple gospel, and we need to remind ourselves of it and reassure ourselves of the strength of our foundation. But whether it's been uh, the first time you've heard this series or you knew every word and motion to the song when we opened up the series, The Wise Man Built His House Upon the Rock, when we sang that, and I got the guitar out and had the kids up front. So if you knew all the words to that, I know this is not the first time that you've heard this series. It's an old course to you. But whether it was the first time or many, many times, we, this is something we need to hear and we need to be reminded of in this day, in this time, this season we're in in our life. Amen? And there's something we need to remind each other of. When we see somebody else in a storm, man, we don't need to say, stand back. And I remember when uh, my mom broke her hip and fell and somebody visited her. And, and uh, they said, my relative died of that, of that. You know, it's like, that was encouraging. Thanks. Five times you were told that. That's encouraging. We need to work on our encouragement, church. <laughs> when we see somebody in the storm, we remind them of the firm foundation that they stand upon. Yeah, Amen? Yeah. It's not the stability of their hip they're standing upon. They're standing on the rock, Christ Jesus, that carries them through every storm. That's a much better <laughs> message than I know five people that died from that same surgery. <laughs> we need to be an encouraging church. It's just simple. It's not always easy. When I say I want to remind you of the simplicity of gospel... I want to say this, simple is not always easy. It's one thing to say it on Sunday, write it in your notes and hear it in your seat. It's another thing to walk it out. I realize that. I'm not downplaying the storm at all, but I am lifting up your source and your foundation. There's a huge difference between simple and easy. The lesson is simple. Walking it out is not. But I've experienced in my own life and I've seen in others that it is oh so worth it. <laughs> oh so worth it to walk it out. To trust in Jesus. To listen, hear, and obey. It is oh so worth it. Quick review, going to try to fly through these. In case you missed it, I really encourage you to go back and listen to these sermons. You can get the old-fashioned CD. We're not talking about tapes anymore. CDs are old-fashioned. If you actually have a CD player in your car, wow. You can, you can uh, get a CD and listen to that, but... We can go online and, and so many different ways. Talk to Jordan about that. You can listen, watch the sermons. But I really encourage you, if you missed one of these, to get, get these. The first week we learned that as a believer, a follower, and disciple of Jesus, that we have a foundation, and it is sure. Yeah. That was our first week lesson. And that we are to build our life upon it. It's storm-proof, hurricane-rated, tornado-tested, fire-proof, and flood-proof. Come on, it outlasts kingdoms. It goes beyond borders of any and every nation. It doesn't move according to trends of society, and it doesn't crack under the pressure of culture. How many are thankful for their foundation? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this foundation has a name, and it's above every other name. Come on, I feel like preaching on a Sunday morning. Come on. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. That's the name of our foundation. 
It's the matchless name of Jesus. It's the revelation of who he is and who we are in him. How he's the way, the truth, and the life. And beside him, there is no other. Come on, it's that revelation that Peter spoke of. It says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That's our foundation. Come on, he was willingly laid down his life and paid the price and penalty for my sins and your sins. It's that revelation. He was beaten, whipped, and nailed to that thing we called the old rugged cross. He bore our shame. I love that song we sang today that we can leave our shame at the door because it ain't welcome anymore. Come on, he bore our shame. He was crucified and buried, but three days later, come on, he arose victorious, defeating death, hell, and the grave. And he promised that same power that raised him from the dead to be placed in us so we can walk in that same victory. Amen. That is our foundation. All that in the testimony and assurance of his word. Every word that fills these pages from covers to covers, from index to maps. Come on, that is our foundation. With that kind of foundation, we need not fear any storm. That was the first week. Second week, quickly, come on, we learned that Jesus tells us the storms are coming. But you will remain after the storm. I'm thank, so thankful he didn't just stop as a weatherman and said storm's coming and not know the outcome. But our God knows the outcome and he declares that you will remain if you remain on the rock. If you build your life, if you attach your house, your life to the rock, you will remain. He warns us, but he tells us he'll be with us. Amen? And he will be with us through it all. And when the storm is over and done its worst, we will remain. We also learn that sand is tiny fragments of rock. That rock is the truth of God's word, but sand is tiny bits and fragments of that truth. That's why it's so tempting sometimes to build your life on the sand because it seems right. It sounds right. And even when you break it down, look up to it really close, it looks right. But it's just bits and pieces. Come on, we related it to a builder laying block and somebody handing him the block and and it, 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 saying on it something like holiness and they're putting it down and something else comes up and, and truth, and he puts it down and something else comes up and he's like, no, I don't want this. And he's cast it to the side. He's picking and choosing what truths of the gospel that you want in your life. Yes, we need the whole amen. truth and nothing but the truth yes. to build our life amen. upon. Amen? Yes. amen? It's like saying, I want, I, I, need, I, I want this, but I don't want purity. <laughs> I want forgiveness, but I don't really want to forgive anybody else. Come on. Yes. We need the whole truth of the gospel. All right, new content. Are you ready for new content? Yes. Amen. Somebody say part three. Part three. All right, purpose in the storm, if you're taking notes this morning. Purpose in the storm. We've been told about our foundation. We've been told the storms are coming. But I want to remind you of your purpose in the storm today and encourage you in it. If you find yourself in a storm, I want to tell you there's purpose in the storm. Remember, we're talking about building your house, your life upon the rock. In this passage, your house does not mean your dwelling, not your home. It means your life. And with that in mind, I want to show you a quick video. You can have that ready. Put that up. Just a quick video. Let's just start that over. talking about a foundation. We're talking about a house being built upon a rock. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 7 verse 27. At the end of it, this passage or opening text that we've been on for so long, concerning the foolish man's house, it says the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And I want to emphasize this part we're going to look at. And it fell, and great was its fall. And Luke, he records the same message, and, and he puts it like this. It says, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. I think to myself when I read the words sometimes about the words that are used. Why great? Why was the word great used in these passages? We say something was very good, and we say it was great. Like, how was your time yesterday? It was great. Well, this is not the meaning of that word. Not that it was good. The word great... It literally means big, literally or figuratively, in a very wide application. Fear, exceedingly, great, high, large, 
charge, loud, mighty, and fearful, strong. Its impact could be felt and last for years. Great was its fall. See, we think the decisions that we make in our life don't affect anybody else. <laughs> wow. But the decisions that you make every day could affect a generation and maybe the generation after. Amen. And Amen. people that you don't even think you communicate with or have any effect on. The decisions you make of what you do every day and how you live your life affect so many others. That's why the scripture is talking about it. Great was its fall. The magnitude you may never know, but it's there and it's lasting and it's felt and it's told. When you fall, everyone hears about it. We just had a hurricane come through the nation a couple weeks ago. And my son Joel's down in Louisiana. He got to go through his first hurricane. He <laughs> was really excited about it. And uh, he's never been through anything like that. And then he, then uh, during the hurricane, they actually had some tornado warnings come through. And he's like, hey, something I'm familiar with, tornado warnings. And they're like, oh, well, what do you do? He's like, well, we go to our basement. <laughs> we don't have one. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it a shame when you need to run your foundation and it's not there? Wow. It's a little spiritual nugget in there. But with that part of the country, they don't have basements. But that's how what we do. We run to our shelter. When they were safe. Their house was, was safe where they're at. They're up kind of elevated. All the property got flooded around them. Their house was safe. And Sure, and for people who are staying with, have a generator and are ready and are prepared and equipped for that type of weather. But uh, even uh, his trailer that he's rebuilding was safe, and he was able to, to go visit it and see, but see everything that happened around him. We have fires going across our nation right now, horrible firestorms. If you Google the images of these occurrences of these disasters, you'll be flooded with pictures of flood, of pictures of disaster, of pictures of houses that fell, of everything that didn't survive, of everything that didn't remain. You'll see all these images. Why is it we never show the images of those things still standing? Why is it we don't celebrate the lives of people that have been faithful? Why is it that we always give the media time and the press time to great was its fall? The Bible is telling us great is the fall. Great is the fall. We constantly hear about the affair, about the addiction, about the abuse, about those that were embezzling money, the lies. Well, look at the covers of magazines, if you dare, when you're standing in line. It's covered with divorce and deceit and lies and abuse and charges that have been made and all of the failure, all of the falling. So we don't celebrate and honor faithfulness as much as we publicize failure. As Christians, let's not be like that. As a church, let's not be like that. In this church, let's honor faithfulness and commitment. How about we do that, amen? Yeah. Something simple like this. Raise your hand if you're in this house and you've been married and still are married for more than five years. See, lifting of hands. Amen. Ten years. Fifteen years. 20 years, we're getting old, baby, 25 years, 30 years, 35 years, it's getting smaller, 40 years, 45 years, we're stopping at 50, 50, come on, let's give the Lord a clap offering for 50 years of marriage and for every other marriage represented in there, amen, come on, we celebrate your faithfulness, we celebrate your fortitude, we celebrate the honor, the legacy you're leaving, the decisions made. Come on, let's be the opposite of the culture. Let's give more press and more media coverage and more airtime to life than loss, to victory than defeat. Come on, and when one falls, how about we restore? When one falls in our presence, how about we reach down and help pick up? How about we help save and rescue and do something to build back up? Let that be the reputation of the Christian, of the believer, of New Beginnings Church. That we build back up. Let's not be the guy in our video we watched a few minutes that was standing safely far away from yeah. in, the, in the safety of the shore with the smoke of his cigarette, filming his video, thinking about all the likes he's going to have on the gram and YouTube and how this video might go viral. He's going to be famous for filming someone else's disaster. Have we ever been the man smoking the cigarette, filming on our phone, watching someone else's disaster? Wow. Telling the story. Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you see what happened? 
instead of being one of those that rescue. It's a hard word. Like I said, this is easy to say. It's tough to walk out. Well, I've heard it said, Christians are the only ones that shoot their wounded. Hmm. I say it's garbage. I say, look at Hollywood. They shoot their wounded all the time. Look at professional sports. They'll cast you down in a second. Look at the entertainment everywhere. Read Facebook. <laughs> it ain't just Christians that could kill the wounded, buddy. It's human nature. It's sin nature. But I've got news. It's not God's nature. Now, that sin nature can come into the church. It can come into every aspect of life as we know it's true. But let's not be foolish and believe a lie, I believe, from the pit of hell that says it's only Christians that do that. Christians may do that, and they may have been known for doing that, but that stops in our generation, amen? That stops with me. We talk about being a filter. That's not how we live our life, that we don't do that. Let it not be said of New Beginnings Church. Let it not be said of our life. Come on, let us be like God's nature. Let's stop repeating the fake news, church. <laughs> I've seen for 35 years the broken, the wounded, the separated, the divorced, the addicted, and on and on and on I could go in name of people of being in these situations that find themselves coming into this house and finding healing and finding forgiveness and finding restoration and finding hope and finding deliverance. Come on, don't give me the lie that the church is the only one that kills their wounded and that's what happens in this place. I've seen far too many names. I've seen far too many lives saved. Lives changed in this place alone. Now, that is not the trend. That is not what happens. Amen. That is a great opportunity for a clap offering. That you are part of a church where people find hope, where people find help. Amen. Amen. That's a life goal we need to have, that we are part of that. Let us fight that weak, cowardly, sin nature who stands back and records the destruction of others. And let's be spiritually and sometimes even physically. Come on, as we remember 9-11 this week, like those heroic policemen and firemen and emergency medical personnel who 19 years ago, this past week, on a day we refer to as 9-11, saw others in need and ran in after them. Yeah. You are to be like that spiritually. And sometimes, yes, even physically. We are emergency medical spiritual personnel. We are an army of God. We don't talk about it too much, but you have been enlisted. You have been drafted in the army of God. You have a mission. And on Sunday, we're going to remind you of it. This is your mission. There's purpose in the storm. We're talking about a foundation being built on the rock versus the sand. I showed you examples of houses built on the edge of cliffs with a gorgeous view. And the weather and storms of earth just eroding it underneath them. And houses falling into the sea and Rivers, And I, I showed you a picture of a, a castle built on a rock over a thousand years ago who stands firm today. And today you can visit that place. It showed you the difference between being built on the sand and on the rock. And I want you to think of those images. But I also want to show you two other pictures this morning. I want to show you a picture of a lighthouse and a picture of a beach house. And I say, which one are you? Are you a lighthouse or are you a beach house? See, both enjoy the beautiful sunrises and sunsets. Both enjoy the spray and mist of the ocean and hear the sound of the waves and the birds going by, see the happy crowds. They have so much similarities, but yet they have so much differences. During the storm, which one do you want to be in? Come on, the lighthouse. It's not a trick question. I'm not trying to trick anybody. <laughs> one was meant to be visited. The other meant to be lived in. One is seasonal. The other is year-round. One is recreational. The other is occupational. <laughs> one boards up, closes up. The other stays on, stays open. No matter the weather. So much we could go to, but I don't want to stay on this too long. I just want to remind you that Jesus is the lighthouse that we run to, we run into, and we are safe. But then he asks us to be a lighthouse for others. That's so important that we don't just stop with running to the lighthouse. 
But he equips us and asks us to be a lighthouse to save others. In John 8, 12, it says, Jesus is speaking, he says, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. How many agree with that Jesus is the light of the world? Amen. I want to turn you to Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. This is still Jesus speaking. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Matthew chapter 5. You don't have it. Thanks. All right. So if you got your Bible, you can turn to it. All right. I'll just read it to you. It says, you are the light of the world. This is Jesus speaking. He says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. I want you to think of that image of that castle being built on that rock. Come on, a city set on a hill that can't be hid. The image of that lighthouse. And say, that's my life. That's my life. That's what God is building in me. A place of refuge, a place of safety, a place that people can run to. A place that stands sure. For generations, our life story can be told. A place built on the rock, a life built on the rock. For the protection of my family, but also... For the protection of others, for the safety of others, and to point others to Him. Come on, get back to that mission declaration. Love, live, lead. Come on, this is who we are. This is what we're to be about. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. If you want to turn that, put that up on the screen. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. It says, But the path of the just is like the shining sun the sh that shines ever brighter until the perfect day. Come on, we are to shine. We are to shine. The lighthouse stands in the midst of the storm and lights the way for others. It faces the storm, the same storm that everyone else is in, but it has a mission. Yeah. Same storm. That's what the Christian is. That's what the leader is. Someone asked me that week, what's a leader? I just said, throw off the top of my head, I, I think a lead ship. Lead ship. What's leadership? Lead ship. That lead ship's in the same storm as everybody else behind him, but he's leading. You need to choose to lead in the same storm. And that's not just talking about a pastor. That's you on your workplace. That's you and your family. That's you on your street. That's you in the grocery store. That's you at the gas station. That's you on your team. You're in the same mess as everybody else, but something's different on the inside of you. And you're not just concerned about me and mine, but you're concerned about others. Your eyes aren't just on what is happening to you, but you're concerned with what is happening to others how you can help them through it. Come on, that's leadership and that's what the Christian ought to be. The purpose of your foundation. It's not just so you can get through the storm, but your life and foundation can be an example and an invitation to others. Matthew 5, 16 says, So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I have two, so many images that we could say and share with you. Or maybe those that haven't been in the church long and maybe don't know these stories. So I just want to share two quickly with you. They're heartfelt images that have been stamped and impacted on my life. So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We're talking about purpose in the storm. And how do you have purpose in the storm? Well, I know so many cases of those that have gone through loss and tragedy and, and cancer and all these other things, but still live with purpose in the midst of it. I remember my brother so many times being in the hospital with the leg uh, operations and being uh, tied up and getting better and then hurt, hurting something again, having to have another surgery and going in and visiting him and him being like, who's God got to, for me to minister now? Like, what? Like, your leg, what's it happening? No, man, I talked to this nurse and she was going through this and God put me in this place for this, this exact moment to speak to this nurse. He knew it wasn't about his leg, but it was about God using him in a storm to minister to somebody else. Two cool, quick stories about this that have stamped my life and impacted my life forever. There was a woman in our church named Jan Kessler. Those who have been here a long time didn't remember her. She was dying of cancer. She was in a storm called cancer. And it was just days, not even weeks, before she would pass away. She invited me to her home. I'll try to say it without breaking it down because it just impacted me so much. I was the worship leader at the time, played the piano, and she was planning her funeral and wanted me to come to her house and play the piano at her house, bring my songbook so she could go through the songs and pick the songs that she would have me play at her funeral. Mm -hmm. And as we, I played and she worshiped and cried through songs and had joy on her heart and in her face, 
And she said, oh, that, that'll be a good one. I want my family to hear that one. And let's pick that one and go on through other songs. And I stayed there for a couple hours and it so impacted my life. And as I got back to the car, I was just so, like, just impacted. Like, you want to say, where is the defeat? Come on. Where is the sorrow? Where is the disparity? Where is the loss? Where is the fear? <laughs> she was on a firm foundation. Yeah. And in the midst of her storm, she was going to shine her light to others and point the way to Jesus. You say, well, she died, didn't she? And I say, did she? Yeah, right. My Bible says to be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. She lives. Her story is preaching today from this pulpit of a shining example in the midst of a storm, shining the light to Jesus. She stood in the storm and it affected and influenced my life today. Another man to speak of real quickly was Roberto Rosa, close to many of us in this church that have been here a while. My family especially impacted us and was a man that had a troubled past and gave his life to the Lord and was completely changed and his life turned around. Well, at the end of his life, he was dying. He was literally in the ICU on his deathbed. Many of us went to visit him and he had lots of church members. From, he was Spanish from Spanish church going and visiting him. And so I went in after work one night and someone was already with them and they were letting people come in. They knew the time was short. And there was just one person with them and they were speaking in Spanish, and I went and sat in the corner of the room and just sat there for a long time and saw this man, Roberta, Roberto, preach his heart out on his deathbed to the man that came to encourage him. The man that came to encourage and give some hope to the other, it ended up being the other way around. I didn't need to speak Spanish to know what was being said or to know the message. As I saw the passion and heard the passion coming from Roberto's heart and life and face, coming from that deathbed and, and into the, the man that was sitting there nodding and, and tears coming down his face and him saying, see, see, yes, yes. And him praying for him at the end and the man walking out. And I'm just sitting in the corner and I walk over to his bed. I'm like, Roberto, man, you're crazy. <laughs> he came to encourage you. He's like, brother, I'm leaving, but there's work for him to do. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. His concern was not on himself, it was on others. That might have to face the same storm. Or his concern was not on himself, it was on others. There is a purpose in your storm. And it, the last of it will be great. If great was your fall, great will be your stand. On and on we can go with those that sought out others in the midst of the storm and weren't worried if they even survived it, but just wanted to reach others in the midst of it. And said, God, who is the reason you brought me here? Who do you need me to minister to? Their eyes weren't on themselves, they were on others. Come on, in the natural, when you're equipped, storms don't scare you. <laughs> they excite you. I had a Hummer H3, baby. Storms excited me. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm going. Two feet of snow. Let's go see what this thing can do. I, I loved waiting. I'd come plow the church, and they would plow the state. Plow would come by, make the biggest pile, and no one else could get in and get to that plow truck. I'd be like, I got it. Up and over, through and around. The first day we owned it, I went to show my brother James, and he lives, he's got this big field behind him. There was two feet of snow. And he said, can we take it in the field? I'm like, yeah. Took a brand new, that wasn't brand new, it was brand new to me. Took a new vehicle I just bought that day through a field. Baby was a Hummer, man. It was equipped for those situations. <laughs> equipped for that circumstance. I want to tell you, you are equipped for the storm. You are equipped. See, prepared means you'll just survive. We got preppers. They prepare. They're going to survive and they're going to endure the storm. But there's a difference between being prepared and being equipped. Equipped means you were designed for this circumstance. 
You were designed with this condition in mind. The storm is not a surprise. It's no need to sweat and get nervous. Your faith was designed for this. Yeah. You've got a backup generator that you paid a ton of money for, paid some big fancy electrician to come in and wire it up, and that power goes out, you get excited. Because I'm about to use what I invested so much time on. You have invested time in Bible study, in prayer, in fasting, in attending church. When the storm comes up, it's no time to get scared and frightened. It's time to pull back on the investment you made and live out a life that shines to Jesus in the midst of a storm. Amen. You are prepared and equipped for the storm. 2020 ain't scaring the real church. Come on. Your faith was made. And has equipped you for the storm. God didn't bring the storm to you. He brought you to the storm. Mm -hmm. We need to think like that. To speak to it. To calm it. To bring free peace. Uh, recently we were in our kayaks and paddling. And I had a, 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 a toddler in my, in my kayak with me. And everything was smooth sailing earlier. And all of a sudden the wind picked up. The clouds. Everything funny how things could change so fast on the water. And Everything changed, and I haven't put my life vest on. I'm going to put my life jacket on, too. And uh, so we're going across, and the waves are coming up over the kayak. Like, it's getting real, you know. All right, you know, possibility of going in the water, and this is getting tough. And, and uh, I said, well, Jesus said, peace be still to the storm. So I said it, you know, tried to act, you know. Mm. And uh, a couple seconds went by, and. The toddler says, well, that didn't work. <laughs> I said, no. Sometimes he calms the storm, and sometimes he enables us to get through it. So we're going to paddle. <laughs> and I thank God he enabled us and all those that are with us to row and paddle through. Amen. Somebody said, you pray for the mountain to move, and it doesn't move. God's going to equip you to go through it and go over it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We think we prayed one thing, and it didn't happen. Oh, God failed me. Turn around and walk away. God doesn't answer prayers. No, he wants to answer it a different way. Come Pray on. for it to be moved. Don't get upset if you wake up and there's a shovel in front of you in the morning. <laughs> Sometimes God's got a sense of humor. He answers our prayers so much differently than we would want him to or think he would. Come on, you're to help others in the midst of the storm. Why? Because there are others in the same storm that's not just about you. People are being tossed around to and fro, panicking and in distress. Maybe they don't know the same Jesus you know. Maybe they need reminded that he's there waiting and wanting to help but wanting him, them to call out to him. We not only stand in the storm when others are fleeing, we shine in the storm and rescue others in the midst of it. So we realize it's not about us. It's not even about us making it through dry or making it through at all. It's about God's plan, his design. It's for his glory and his fame. I'm reminded of the Haitian, I think it was, uh, we remember the story, who was it, was it Rodney or somebody was up on top of the roof when the coup broke out and the bullets were, bullets were flying. Right. Rodney and Brent. Rodney and Brent. And the little Haitian that they came to help, asked, he asked them, he said, are you scared? And he said, Jesus say, I die today, I die today. Jesus say, I know I die today, I don't die today. Mm -hmm. Faith in the storm. Mm -hmm. Faith in the storm. It's about his plan, his design, it's for his glory and his fame. I want to encourage you this morning, quit searching for the answer. You are the answer. Yeah. Well, that's bold. Well, that's, that's not right. Jesus is the answer. And he's placed you in the storm as his tool. Yeah. As his lighthouse. As his flashlight. <laughs> if you're old enough to remember the glow worms. <laughs> One of my kids had that thing. You squeeze it and it lights up the whole room. Illuminate the darkness, Christian. Yeah, yeah. Illuminate. It's like you're looking for a flashlight and your whole body's shining. Where's a flashlight? I wish I could find a light. And somebody like, uh, dude, you're, you're glowing. You are the light. Those are Jesus' words. You are the light. Quit looking for someone else. It's like being a lifeguard and somebody comes screaming, hey, somebody's drowning. And the lifeguard goes, ah! <laughs> we got to get somebody. I'm like, no, I came, you're the lifeguard. Church, don't forget who you are. I want to remind you in 2020, in the midst of COVID and the stinking mask wearing and, and all the riots and the election and everything else going on, you are the church of the living God. When somebody runs to you, don't run and get somebody else. God placed you there for a reason. 
He's placed you in every workplace, placed you in every school, Amen. placed you on every team, placed you in every street for a reason, for a mission. Come on, you are the light. Shine, baby. Come on, turn to somebody and say, shine, baby. Shine. Come on. When we know how strong and sure our foundation is, we will remember its purpose. So that outreach and evangelism isn't a once-time-a-year event. It's not limited to an event, whether it's once a year or even once or twice a week. But rather, we live it every day, ready to give an account for the hope that's within us, ready to share, living as example, pointing the way to Jesus. See, the lighthouse shines on sunny, calm days and on clear nights as well as in the storm. When asked why, how many of you ever been asked the why question? Why did God allow this? Why did God allow COVID? Why did God allow the riots? Why did God allow this? Why did God allow that? We can't always answer. In fact, we can usually never answer the why. Right. But in the midst of the why, I'm going to cling to the who. I'm going to cling to the who. Why would God allow the pandemic, the cancer, the whatever, the storm has happened? Why would God allow this to happen or that to happen? I can't answer the why. It's been asked for thousands of years. It's not a new question. But in the midst of the why, I do know this. I don't know the why, but I do know the who. In the midst of the why, I will trust the who. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. In the midst of the why, I will trust the who. His name is Jesus. <laughs> It's not a band. His name is Jesus. When I can't figure out the why, I'm going to rely on my faith. Stand firm on my foundation and look for whosoever. Look for that whosoever we talked about in the series that God brought me to help in the storm. I'm closing. I would like to say, can we actually live in such a way that we thank God that he counted us worthy to, the, to put us in the storm? Can we actually live in such a way that we thank God that he counted us worthy of the storm? So this is how the Apostle Paul talked. You remember his writings. He encouraged us to live like this. Not as some mamby-pamby, limp-wristed, Brother Joe, you say panty-waisted, yeah. spineless, <laughs> sorry excuse of a Christian. Come on. That would fall to every wind and flow with every current, sorry excuse of what a church would be. That would make our forefathers sick. On, but we would stand as men and women of God and carry on the mission to seek and to save. We are attached to the mission that Jesus had. To destroy the works of the enemy and to seek and save that which was lost. Those are his words. That was his mission. And we come under his covering and become part of his assignment. It's our assignment. And we would pick that up. Can God trust you with a storm? And when God looked over the expanse of time and saw the year 2020 with all of its troubles, with all of its trials... And the question came to him, who can we send? Who can we send into your family with all the mess it has? Who can we send into your workplace with the craziness or your school or your situation? Who can we send? And God said, I have somebody. I know who I can send. I've saved somebody for this time and this expanse of time, this year 2020. I have just the right body. The church. Those will build my church. Those that will expand my kingdom. He selected you, and he said it's going to be all right. I want to encourage you one last thing as a coach. I don't care what the scoreboard says. I don't care how much time is left on the clock. We win. It doesn't matter the odds, the limited time left, or how many points the enemy has stacked up against us. I'm telling you, we win. Amen. We win. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, we win. We win. It doesn't matter the odds, the time that's left. I'm telling you, we win. Don't believe the lie. That's how he wins. That's how our opponent, the enemy, wins when we believe his lies. He says there's not enough time. That God can't and won't use you. That your good will never outweigh your bad. Anybody ever heard these voices? Anybody ever heard this story? Your good will never outweigh your bad. Come on, because he knows with God, time's not an issue. The enemy knows that God will use you. That's why he tells you, you he won't use you. And it's not that your good needs to outweigh your bad. It's that your God is so good and takes our filthy rags and clothes us with his robe of righteousness. It's the best hand-me-down 
that's ever been given. <laughs> I was number four in the family. I know all about hand-me-downs. Yeah. It's the best hand-me-down in history. Our older brother gives us his robe of righteousness and says, here, put this on. Stand on this. It's storm-proof. It's hurricane rate. It's tornado tested. It's flood proof. That we may never be that house that would represent a life that wasn't on a good foundation and going down the river destroyed. That we may never be the man on the shore filming in the safety and comfort of the shore recording someone else's disaster. Come on, we have a shore foundation. Amen? Let's give the Lord a clap offering for his foundation. Sorry to give you a few extra minutes this morning. I thank you. And I just want to pray for you right now. If you just bow your heads. Lord God, I thank you so much for your word, God. Lord, I thank you, God, that it is alive and real. God, and you're speaking it, not just to fill a time slot on a Sunday morning, but you want to speak this into the lives of those represented here in this place and those joining us online, that we don't have to fear the storm. We don't have to fear it all. And in fact, we've got a mission and assignment in the midst of it, that our life is equipped for this season. No matter what comes our way, God, use us as emergency personnel, God. Use us to rescue others. Use this house, Lord Jesus, to be a lighthouse in the city. I pray, God, not just that, but you use every home, God. Lord, as we're not meeting as often as we'd like or doing the things together under the church covering, God. Lord, but we go out from this place and live as evangelists, live as lighthouses, God. Lord, that you would equip all those in this room, God, to lead others to you, and you have equipped them, God. Lord, we look no further, God, than you and your word, God, moving in our life. Lord, I thank you so much, God. I pray for those in the storm today, God. Lord, that you would reassure them, God, that you would pick them up, God, and brush them off and dry them off and put them on your rock to stay, God. Lord, I thank you so much for all you're doing in our midst, God. We love you, we honor you, we appreciate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, the church said amen. 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 Come on. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Give somebody an air high five or whatever it is you do. Encourage somebody today.